Nowadays, it seems like every time I read the automotive news, you keep reading about articles on how sedans are dying because everybody is buying a crossover. Kind of like that thing behind me. Thankfully, there are a few manufacturers out there that are still investing heavily in sedans. And this week, I'm testing a sedan that got a complete refresh for the 2020 model year. In fact, the refresh is so extensive that every single body panel except for the doors and the roof have been changed. It's also one of the few rare large rear drive sedans that's still available with one of the only naturally aspirated V8s in the segment. The vehicle that I'm talking about is the 2020 Genesis G90, the flagship of the Genesis brand, and it may very well be one of the last of its kind. It was about three years ago where Hyundai finally decided to create their own luxury division, Genesis, back in 2017. In fact, I was testing the very first Genesis model ever back then, the G90, which if you guys don't remember, was the replacement for the Hyundai Equus, which was their first ever attempt at a full-size flagship luxury sedan from Korea. Now, even though the G90 or the Equus didn't really have much of a reputation here in America, in Korea, these are the cars that were being that uh, big executives or wealthy people were chauffeured around. And I was really impressed with the G90. Of course, it had a couple of things that I didn't really like. If you guys haven't seen that video, click the link in the description below um, so you can kind of refresh your memory on how that car drove and looks like. When I first saw this G90, the refreshed model, it is so radically different. In fact, every single body part Every single panel on this car, except for the roof and the doors, has been completely redesigned for 2020. So being a flagship model, one of the key elements of a flagship is the exterior design. And the G90 had some problems there when it first came out back in 2017. I criticized the car for being very bland, very safe, very vanilla looking. As you can see, the 2020 model looks to rectify all that because it has the brand's new styling direction here. It's got the big crest grille at the front and these quad beam full LED headlights, which definitely give this car a completely different look versus the pre-refreshed model. The grill on this car is especially polarizing. It's going to be basically something that a lot of people will talk about because it has a lot of presence to it. At first, I didn't really like the way the grill looked when I saw this thing at the auto show, but here in person, or at least out in the real world, I think it gives the car a very distinctive look. What I think Genesis could have done better is integrating the sensor here for the radar cruise control. That technology, of course, is standard on every G90, but I just think that it looks a little bit cheap with this kind of black uh, or this clear plexiglass plastic over the center of the grill. I do love the quad beam LED headlights in this car, which do come standard. If you guys remember the pre-refresh model, they didn't actually have LEDs as standard. You had Byzenons as standard, while the V8 models got the full LEDs, which by the way, this one here is the V8 model. You can basically take your pick between either a six or an eight cylinder option. Genesis keeps it pretty simple with the option packages on this car, which is not something that the Europeans or the Japanese even do. So those of you who are looking for some simplicity, you may want to take a look at one of these. Now the wheels are also very controversial, especially when I first saw this car. The spokes in the vehicle actually kind of mimic what you see in the actual grill. It's kind of a throwback here to the 90s or 80s. Let me know in the comments below if you guys like the look of this thing. The one thing I do like is the integrated turn signal here. Now it is missing the dual uh, LED lights that you get on models like the upcoming GV80 and the G80. So remember, this is just a refresh on an existing car. So you're not gonna get the, the fact that the styling was designed uh, with this car in mind like you do with these those upcoming new models. Now this is still a really big sedan. It's the flagship of the Genesis lineup. So at 205 uh, inches long, this is within the same specs of something like a Mercedes-Benz S-Class or a Lexus LS. I will say that the silhouette is still a little bit on the bland side, but I think that Genesis has really tried hard to make this thing more distinctive. And it certainly has paid off. The rear of the vehicle also has a completely different look. Remember, every body panel except for the roof and the doors have been changed. These dual uh, LED taillights kind of mimic the quad beam design that you get for the headlights. And also Genesis is kind of spelling out their name here as opposed to putting their uh, winged emblem there, which I think was actually a really good move. The exhaust tips even have the same kind of look as the grill, which I think is a little bit gimmicky. I'm not really the biggest fan of that, but 
As you can see here, you can tell this one's a five liter V8 from the badge. It is missing the company's H-Track all-wheel drive. So this one here is actually a rear drive model. That's something that Acura doesn't even have. Now opening up the trunk here, you can see the G90 has a pretty comparable trunk for everything in the segment. It's actually pretty big when you first open the trunk. The seats do not fold down 60-40. That's pretty common in this segment. Instead, you just have a little trunk pass through and you get around 15.7 cubic feet of space. So obviously the G90 has a completely new look on its own and it's definitely something that stands out. In fact, I didn't like the way it looked at first uh, at the auto show, but here in person, it's a rather striking car that I think really works on the G90. Now, being a flagship luxury sedan, it's definitely a dying, in a dying, dying segment. Everyone's basically buying up big luxury SUVs. Just look at BMW with their massive X7, which is just flying off dealer showrooms as opposed to the 7 Series luxury sedan, or even Mercedes with the GLS over the S-Class sedan. The G90 is finding itself in a very weird position because Genesis currently does not have any SUVs in their portfolio. That is changing very soon, however. But the one cool thing about the G90 is it's in a very unique segment, or at least it has a unique part a role in the segment because it's one of the few vehicles that offers the choice of a naturally aspirated V8. That's right, a naturally aspirated, so non-boosted or supercharged eight cylinder, which allows you to do things like this, Ooh, that's a really nice sound. So what's powering this thing? Well, Genesis offers a choice of two different engines. So let's talk about those. So in a world full of electrification, Genesis is definitely going to be appealing to some of you traditionalists out there, especially if you're looking for something like a naturally aspirated V8. That's something that Lexus ditched about two years ago on their flagship LS. But as you can see here in all its beauty, I'll take off this silly plastic cover here. And you can see it's actually a really nice looking engine bay. I wasn't expecting this. There are some modern BMWs that I've shown you guys where there's a bunch of cheap plastic wiring. And as you can see, this is one beauty of an engine, but this is the company's five liter naturally aspirated V8. It makes 420 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. Those are actually pretty good numbers. That's what something like a Ford Mustang used to develop back in 2015 when that, that engine first came out. Um, this particular one here is the top engine. It's about $2,500 more. Genesis also offers a 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 that makes 365 horsepower, 376 pound-feet of torque. I've actually driven that engine already when I first drove this car back in 2017. And I'll be honest, I really like the way the V8 sounds in this thing, which We'll jump back into the driving scene in a moment and you guys can hear uh, the engine noises. Now all G90s will come with just an eight speed automatic transmission. It's a Genesis Hyundai sourced transmission. With you, you can take your, your pick between either rear drive or for 2,500 bucks extra, you can get the company's H-Track all-wheel drive system. Now the downside to this V8 is it does make the G90 a little bit more thirsty and a little bit heavier than some of the competition. This one here is rated to get 16 in the city, 24 on the highway. All-wheel drive will drop that to 1523, whereas the V6 will get 1725, so slightly better MPG. Uh, premium gas is recommended, and this one's also pretty heavy. It weighs just under 4,900 uh, pounds. So this five liter V8 offers zero to 60 performance in the low to mid five second range. It's obviously fast, refined, smooth. It's not like Mercedes AMG fast or you know BMW M division fast or Audi RS uh, fast. However, it does offer plentiful performance. Really where the G90 shines, just like all the other vehicles in the segment, is cruising. Even in sport mode here, if you slop it, slap it into comfort, this is one of the most comfortable cars I've ever sat in from the seats to the cushy ride quality to the super quiet interior to the excellent visibility. Genesis actually improved the driver assistance tech in this car this year where they've added pedestrian detection and cyclist detection. It has a better highway driving assist where it actually keeps you centered in the lane. And with the blind view cameras and the blind spot monitoring and cross traffic alert, this is a car that you're going to enjoy driving every day. You can basically take this thing to and from work, um, go to the office and back, uh, go out to dinner with your spouse, take it on long road trips. It's a car that is so immensely comfortable and quiet. The annoyances of the outside world just very much disappears. And it makes you feel like you've bought a car that is far more money than you actually paid for it. I think that's the secret with Genesis in general. They offer a lot, especially when you look at this interior. This interior is so immensely comfortable, full of tech. Even though it's not full of the latest tech, it's not overloaded with tech, um, but they did make changes to this interior for 2020, so let's go over some of those changes. 
The richness of this interior starts obviously in the front seats, and I have to say, Genesis is really killing it with the exterior styling, what's under the hood, with the handling. The interior is really where it starts when you're looking at a luxury sedan, and this interior, while it doesn't look all that different from the 2017 model, they've made some subtle changes here to make this car feel a little bit nicer this year. Now, the first thing I wanna show you, you can't be bothered with slamming doors on cars like this, so Genesis, includes a soft closed door. So it, all the doors will soft close. All you have to do is click it. If you do want to slam it, it has a really nice solid thunk, which reminds me that I'm sitting in a much more expensive car than it actually is. This interior is known as blue uh, and brown. Uh, Genesis actually calls it indigo, which I love. I love the fact that the exterior is blue and we have a blue interior with this brown uh, two-tone combination. It's kind of like a throwback again to the 80s and 90s. I love how blue interiors are kind of making a comeback. Although in the light, it kind of looks a little bit black. This is a really handsome, more traditional cabin. So if you guys hate those big tablet screens that stick out that look like an afterthought, Genesis has a very nicely integrated 12.3 inch display here, which by the way, it now includes Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's standard this year. It wasn't even available on the 2019 model. So bravo for Genesis on finally giving us what we want. As you can see here, gigantic screen that takes up the entire orientation here, which is a great thing because a lot of these other manufacturers will cut this screen in half when you have a big display like here, when you're using the CarPlay. The standard Genesis Connect or Genesis head unit here has a really easy to use interface here. So you can use it as a touch screen or you can use the control dial here. The one thing I wish Genesis had add was, added was a full digital display here. Instead, you have this really small seven inch display, which I think looks probably one of the most dated parts of this interior. But remember, Genesis has a completely new system that they're working on in the GV80 and the G80. Uh, they also changed the look of the wood grain trim this year. As you can see, it's got a matte finish. This is real wood, real aluminum. It even smells expensive in here. The pre-refresh model had that glossy uh, wood look, which looked really fake. And it just also looked very old school. So loving that. Love the leather stitching that you find all over the interior. This is actually standard. A lot of the manufacturers from Germany or from Europe make you pay extra for the leather lined dash. So Genesis gives that to you as standard. The leather continues onto the door panels here uh, where there's beautiful stitched leather, more of that wood, aluminum trim. Even the window switches have a really nice tactile uh, metal finish to them, which makes the car feel really special and expensive. Now on the door over here, you're gonna notice your usual settings here for your memory seats. There's also another button here called smart. When I push the smart button here, it actually goes into what Genesis calls Smart Posture Care. This is new for 2020. This is a system that actually will read your height, your pants uh, inseam length, and your weight. So it asks for that information. When you tell it that information, um, you basically have it analyze your actual specific body and the system will adjust the seat to how it believes is the most comfortable and best for your posture while you're sitting in the car. That's something that I've never seen before in the industry, but let me show you this. Seat one, this is the position that I have the car set to where I feel is the most comfortable for me to drive this thing. Number two is what the car thinks is the most comfortable. Let me show you what it changes the position to. It lowers the seat back, it reclines it slightly and it pushes the steering wheel out. Now, when I first had the car tell me this is how I should be driving. It was a little weird because I feel like my arms are super stretched, but I do like the recline of the seat. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Again, that's gonna be custom tailored to your height, your waist size, and of course your weight. So that's a really cool thing that Genesis is including. It really shows how the company is innovating here. The rest of this cabin, it's all pretty much the standard traditional stuff, very traditional knobs for your tuning, your volume, uh, four zone climate control. And they also added this wireless phone charger down here for the 2020 model year. I also like the Genesis shifter here. It's an eight speed auto. It's an electronic shifter. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's this really nice 360 camera with very clear graphics. It looks basically as, as nice as what you're gonna find from all the European brands. And you can also access that camera uh, anytime you want by just pushing the view button down here. All these buttons, again, are lined with real metal trim. The drive mode selector here allows you to cycle between comfort, sport, eco, and custom. When you have the car in a sport setting here, the bolsters actually will kind of squeeze and hug you a little bit more. So if you're attacking your favorite twisties, you're not gonna be moving around in the seat as much. You can control all of your heated and cooled seats from down here as well. You can control the rear sunshade and your heated steering wheel, which actually offers a two level heat. This center console here opens up with a dual lined lid or a double hinged lid. So if somebody has you know, their uh, elbow here, it won't actually interfere with them. 
And the seats of this car are extremely plush and comfortable. They adjust in like 22 different ways in addition to having that smart posture care. So if you're looking for luxury in here, this has everything that you basically expect without none of the extra techy stuff that can get a little overwhelming, like something that you'll find in the Germans. Really, the only thing that Genesis needs to add is a panoramic sunroof. I just have a standard size sunroof here, and it would be nice to have the full glass roof effect that you can get on most of its competitors. Oh, I'm really having a bad hair day, and I really wish that I could go to a salon and get my hair cut. Thanks, coronavirus. Oh, I mean, what'd you expect me to do in a car that has a back seat that's supposed to be reserved for executives? As you can see here, one of the perks of getting the V8 model is the fact that you get a 14-way adjustable seat on this side and a 12-way power seat on the driver's side of the rear. The back seat in this car isn't what I would say is Mercedes-Benz May Maybach territory, but this is pretty nice. Genesis actually said you get around 39 inches of legroom here, and when you fold down this little control panel here, this car will seat three across, but you're better off with two. You got all of these controls back here. So I've got heated and ventilated seats back here. I can adjust the seat here with these controls. You can see it's the same thing on the other side of the vehicle. I can actually push a button here that will control the front seat and move it back into position. You can only do that on this side because remember there's a driver there uh, where I could fold the front seat out of the way or bring it back. This is kind of more of the upright position. So there's basically a rest button and there's a button to kind of go back into the normal setting. This back seat is pretty unexpected. I wasn't expect, gen expecting Genesis to give us a back seat that's this plush. I mean, even the materials in here, I love the fact that I've got this blue and brown interior. I was really loving the color combination here. I also love all the suede Alcantara, the leather stitching here on the actual grab handle. Everything in here feels really rich and supple and really expensive, really unexpected for what you get in uh, a Genesis product. It makes me forget that Hyundai is their parent company. Now, the Ultimate 5 liter also comes with these two screens. They're 10 and a quarter inch screens and they basically mimic what you see on the front uh, head unit of this car. Um, you can control it via the, this little remote pad over here where you can basically tell it which side you wanna go to or you can control both sides. You can see the GPS, you can adjust the radio. Um, I suspect the Apple CarPlay will also come back here as well if you have it hooked up to the front of the vehicle. Uh, opening up this over here, you can see there's two 12 volt power outlets. And then in here, uh, there's a USB and another power outlet and a little bit of a light. So unlike some of its German competitors, if you're looking for like a champagne flute here or a refrigerator, sorry, that's not available. But remember, this car is significantly uh, less expensive. Now, a couple of other things that you expect back here. Um, the sunshades, there are power retractable sunshades on both sides, and there's also one that will control the rear sunshade behind me, uh, which is also a really nice feature. You can basically turn this into like your own little sanctuary where uh, you can kind of block out the sun or block out the paparazzi. The metal speaker covers that you see here on the doors are part of the Lexicon sound system, which has nearly a thousand watts of power. It doesn't sound quite as good as some of the top Bowers and Wilkins and Bang and Olufsen sound systems, but I will give Genesis credit, only Rolls-Royce uses uses Lexicon as a, a brand supplier for sound systems, and it does sound pretty damn good. So the biggest thing they added was Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is what I, re what I complained about in my review of this car three years ago. And they also made it a touchscreen. It's a little bit far for my reach to be a, a really nice touch touchscreen button. You can use the controls over here. And I mean, check out that massive screen. It's a 12.3 inch display, uh, and it does make up for the fact that the screen here is not a full digital display. I have a heads up display over there too. It's overall nice, but not overly complex. There isn't so many ways that you can kind of adjust this thing, even down to the build spec of this car. You know, you take your pick between, you know, uh, a V6 or a V8, either rear or all wheel drive. There's seven exterior colors, three interior colors. There's no options. You basically, you know, pick the engine that you want. It comes with either the premium for the six or the ultimate package for this eight. And it has everything you want. So I love how Genesis is keeping it simple, especially in a world where all the Germans and even the Japanese make it incredibly complex. So what about that V8 power? Yes, this car looks like a boring luxury barge on the outside, but it's rear wheel drive. At least this one here is rear wheel drive. Put my foot down here. that sound that it makes, it's just so satisfying. It makes you feel like you're king of the road 
from the silky smoothness of that V8 to the crisp shifts of the eight-speed automatic transmission to that pillowy, cushy ride. Even though it's in sport right now, it's still such a comfortable ride. Oh, it's got so much effortless power. I drove this car three years ago with the 3.3 liter V6, which actually is just about as quick as the V8, but I will take the V8 because of the noise it makes. Now, I will say the noise in sport mode is being amplified somewhat. It's, uh, it's not uh, the true V8 sound, which does sound good on the outside, <laughs> but you can hear the, the speakers are kind of amping up the sound of the V8, which is just so smooth. It's so buttery. It's so rich. It reminds me of the, the old 4.6 liter V8 from the Lexus LS, because as you know, you can't get that V8 anymore in the LS. Lexus still makes a five liter, a satisfying five liter V8 in the GSF. Unfortunately, that is going to be discontinued, which would make the G90, if Genesis continues to offer it with that, the only luxury, full-size luxury sedan offering with an NA, a naturally aspirated V8. Now, of course, I could complain and moan about how this car is rather on the boring side when you start finding some twisty roads, but that's not necessarily the mission of these big sedans. I mean, sure, Mercedes has the AMG versions of the S-Class. There's like a Alpina B7 version of the 7 Series. Uh, Audi makes an S8 version, which I'd say is probably one of the more sportier options, but nobody buys these to be, you know, really sporty. You know, get an M5 or an E63 if you want something like that. This is built for cruising, but this car will hold its own on a back road. The steering is surprisingly heavy in its feel, offers good feedback through the front tires. Visibility is easy. The seats actually do hold you in place because they do adjust in 22 different ways. And I just can't help but feel like a rock star on this thing. Who cares of the fact that it's not a BMW or Mercedes or an Audi? Because Genesis is an upstart luxury brand and the G90 is very much the start of this. Don't forget that we've got a completely redesigned G80 coming out. We've got that GV80 SUV and then an upcoming GV70. There's rumors about a GV90, so an SUV based off of this car. And Genesis, if you don't build it, you're seriously missing out on an opportunity because this is seriously one amazing product. And even though it's just a refreshed model, I find a lot more to like about this 2020 G90 than I did back in 2017. Maybe it's because of the fact that this segment is just a dying segment. And this thing is offered at a price that undercuts Lexus by $15,000. It undercuts the Germans by as much as $40,000. Yet you don't really lose that much in terms of luxury or feel. <laughs> back started to come out there for just a second. I am impressed. I am super impressed. Even fuel economy, trip computer says I'm averaging 17 MPG, which isn't great, but it's a V8. You gotta pay to play. Sorry, I won't do any burnouts. How sad. Maybe I can try again. Yeah, it won't let me do burnouts. Lame! <laughs> so in a world full of electrification and America's love for crossovers, it seems a little strange for me to be reviewing a big, expensive, rear-drive, V8-powered luxury barge of a sedan. But I have to say, I really love cars like this, and it makes this car especially unique. And when you factor in all the changes that Genesis made this year to finally address the bland looks that I had with the pre-refresh model, and you can help but see how well Genesis is doing right now. They may be a little bit late to the party in terms of crossovers, that's coming. Uh, later this year, we're gonna be getting that GV80. There's also a new G80 sedan coming. The new G90 is a taste of where Genesis is going to be heading in the next couple of years. And it really gets me excited because this car is a strong value compared to a lot of its competition. It's a starting price of around $72,000 for the rear drive V6 model. It undercuts something like a Lexus LS by, by about $10,000. The Germans are gonna easily cost around 
30 to $40,000 more. The V8 will cost about $3,500 more. And if you guys want all wheel drive, it's about $2,500 more. You basically take your pick between seven colors on the outside and three colors on the inside. So this is luxury simplified. I think it's going to do extremely well for people who get overwhelmed and want something that's a little bit nice and where you don't care too much about the prestigious badge. Now this one here being the V8 model, the ultimate trim stickers for around $76,000. You could basically top this car out at around $79,000, which is a whopping 15 grand less expensive than the last Lexus LS I had and easily $40,000 less expensive than a 7 Series Audi A8 or Mercedes-Benz uh, S-Class. So really, once you get past the Genesis badge, which honestly, this brand is getting a lot of momentum. This a lot of people out there that think Genesis is really going to start stealing some sales from not just the Japanese, but the German brands. It makes this car a really enticing proposition. And if you guys are looking for an actual luxury sedan, a sedan, not a crossover. This is one of the gems in the segment. It's really the underdog, so I highly recommend that you put one at the top of your list. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my overview on the 2020 Genesis G90. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please be sure to subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.